Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to LDRS Creative. We're in studio tonight for another craft class live. Yay! <laughs> for those of you that may or may not have heard a little bit of music coming in at you here and there, um, Alan's trying to get the music going again, and he was getting too much feedback and stuff from it. He couldn't anyway. So we're going to have to do some more testing with that. So that's why the music was kind of coming in and out, and he just decided to just not bother with it right now until we can uh, spend some time testing it and make sure that we get it just right for you guys but uh, my goal is to get back to having some music and some sound effects because that's fun <laughs> uh, especially when you have that five minute wait i know it's always nice to have something to listen to and hopefully something better than elevator music anyway so many people coming in tonight thank you so much i've been reading everybody's comments so welcome to melanie waters so excited for my first ldrs creative live welcome melanie uh we've got kathy is here kathy pisupati yay hi all uh gail is here gail spresser terry daniel from snowy colorado oh my 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 it's actually been it's actually been well today was a rainy day but it's been warmer so we actually got to get our summer car out uh, the other day and uh, cross my fingers it started because we hadn't started it all winter so that was kind of fun I didn't have to drive a big huge you know um, what are they called SUV manly car yeah manly car <laughs> <laughs> I'm like this big so I don't like to have a really big car I'm very short so anyway welcome 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 so Elsie Carter is here hello and uh, who else is here uh, Christy from Hot Atlanta, uh, Lisa Peters Masalowski, um, Agnes is here from, let's see, from Texas, and Terry from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Sandy Cullendorfer, hey girl, from right here in Michigan, Terry Daniel, you already have two feet, oh my gosh, uh, Susan says it's 52 in northern Wisconsin, hello Stephanie, thank you so much. Uh, Vicki is from South Georgia, Beverly from Tennessee, Elsie Carter is here from St. Catharines, Ontario. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Patricia Knight, a big hello to you and Felicia from Houston. Hello, Corrine, my darling from Ohio. Uh, Creative Cindy is in Michigan, north of Grand Rapids. Actually, our son goes to school in Kalamazoo, so not all that far from there. Uh, Jody from Illinois, so many people, so nice. Denise from Utah, I, I could go on and on. So we're, we're not going to do, oh my goodness, Cindy Patty, 81 in Florida, ugh. Yeah, I'm, I, you know what, that would actually be really nice for like a week right now. <laughs> 81 would be a nice break. But anyway, so we're going to do some watercolor painting tonight. Um, I haven't done it in a while. Many of you already know that it is my absolute favorite way to color. Um, and so I did a little bit of practicing because I wanted to, you know, whenever I watercolor, it ends up being a longer, uh, a longer live. And so I'm going to kind of start coloring this gorgeous floral, but I'm not going to spend, you know, a whole hour painting it. Um, so I'm going to kind of get you going, teach you a little bit about it. And then I do want to, you know, make sure that we can finish up a card. And, um, and I don't want to spend your whole evening here. So um, Linda says, oh, your son goes to school in Kalamazoo. Awesome. Very cool. All right, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to be working or playing, if you will, with the Billowing Blossoms tonight. It is part of our new spring collection. This is a Billowing Blossom stamp uh, with the dies, and I have some other things. Uh, for those of you that have already picked up your bundle, so whenever we do these lives, um, we try to put a bundle um, that is available. It's, a, it's at a discounted price and it's available. Uh, we're doing it so it's, it's available like two weeks before we actually go live. So if you want to craft with me while, while I'm crafting, you're welcome to do that. The bundle will still be available uh, through the weekend, I believe. And I think Linnea is probably going to put up a link to that for those of you that might be interested in it. And we in that bundle, we don't want to make the bundle really huge. We want that bundle to have like you know, the most important items that we're going to feature in the card that I'm going to make. So um, right now we're going to go overhead. I do want to mention real quickly, before I forget, we always do a giveaway at the end. You do have to be present for it. And the only way that we know that you're here is if you leave some kind of a comment. So it's the only way that we can choose your name. Tonight we're going to do two giveaways because I have two special things here to give away. So uh, we're going to go overhead. I'm actually, you know what, I'm going to set the giveaway aside so that I don't spoil <laughs> the surprise. And uh, we do have two giveaways and those, like I said, will be at the end. So for right now, we're going to go ahead and go overhead and we're going to get started. Okay, so here we go. Let's, let's zoom in, Alan. 
So you're looking at this beautiful billowing blossoms. I've already got it tucked away in my, um, my little storage folder on my, there we go. It's on my, uh, my Klingon store. I don't have the stamp here because I have the stamp already on my stamping platform. Um, but you can see the rest of the stamps are on here. This is Klingon store. So notice my stamps are sticking right to it so I don't lose them. And then on the back, I put um, a part of just a half of a magnet sheet that I cut with my paper trimmer and put the magnets there. So everything I need is right here. It's all contained. Uh, but you can see how gorgeous and romantic and almost vintage and old-fashioned this beautiful, gorgeous floral is. And there's two sentiments with it, sending you all my love and pure joy is found in the simplest of moments. So we're going to be working with that today along with the dies. And then also in the spring collection, um, we've got... Uh, floating circles and floating squares. I'm gonna go. I'm actually gonna be playing with the floating squares this time, and so I have that already in my storage folder ready for me. Um, I also decided to pull in. Um, this is oh for goodness sake, what is this one called? <laughs> it's our diagonal. Oh my goodness, what is it called? It just left my head. Um, help me out, Linnea. This is not part of the bundle, but I think I'm going to use this. It's not a diagonal. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but there's two die sets to it. So we have the um, the card toppers, and then we also have the layering frames. And Linnea is going to get the name because we've got so many products, I always forget what the names of things are. Oh, I do have it on the back, on the back here. It's diagonal... It is diagonal stitch. You were right. For some reason, I didn't think that was right. It's the diagonal stitch layered card toppers. Um, this smaller one is the layered frames. I might use both. I'm not really sure exactly what I'm going to do because I haven't planned out the card completely. So, um, but let's see what else I have here that I'm going to be playing with. So I have a, just a little towel here because I'm going to be watercoloring. I'm going to need that. And... This is our watercolor paper. This is, uh, it's our A2. It's, uh, it's cotton, they're cotton watercolor panels. And um, they are fantastic, 110 pound. They're perfect for when you are doing your letterpress or any kind of watercolor. So I've mentioned this so many times, but for those of you that are new, I mentioned earlier, I love to watercolor. It's my favorite way of coloring. And so when I was on the hunt for a watercolor paper, I was extremely picky, tested a whole bunch of different things. And this was the one that I chose. It is absolutely wonderful. It has a little bit of a tooth to it. Um, it's good and thick and heavy, but it's also smooth. And the color on this is fantastic. So when I do my card making, I always work with Nina Classic Crest solar white and that's what's here on the left and then this is my watercolor cardstock and you can tell there's really no difference so um, that was important to me also because I wanted to make sure that my whites matched when I'm layering things and uh, but this accepts the water beautifully it accepts a good amount of water and it really helps me to move the paint nicely which you will see once I get crafting now I tend to put if you see a little W here when I, um, when I unpack my watercolor paper, because it looks so much like my Nina paper, I put a little W on the back so I always know that it's watercolor paper. I can feel the difference because it's not as smooth as the Nina, but just a little tidbit of information, I do mark it on the back so that I don't mess it up. And then the other thing I'm going to be working with is my... Uh, 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 Kurataki, uh, Genzai, Tambi. These are my watercolor paints that I love to paint with. So I'm going to be playing with some of the reds up in here as well as some of the greens. And then I have some little paint brushes here. Um, and these are in, let's see what sizes they are there. The largest one is a zero. And the other ones don't seem to be marked. Or actually they are. It's just you can't see it. I can't see it. Oh, for goodness sake. I can't tell what size it is. Can you see that, anybody? <laughs> um, I think it says five slash zero. I'm not sure. Um, anyway, they're skinny and they're like round and they're so they're just small. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started with this. Oh, and I do have some water here, right? My watercolor paper or my watercolors need some water. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and stamp. So remember I said my stamp was already in my, let me move this out of the way. I don't like to have that water anywhere near my computer and stuff or anywhere where I can potentially uh, hit it. So I'm laying my watercolor paper right into that corner. This should be good. Let me open this up. Let's make sure it's not in the way. It's not. Very good. Um, I do need some Raven. So I'm going to use my hybrid ink, which many of you know already. The hybrid ink is a combination, has a combination of properties from pigment and dye inks and so on. Um, this is a go-to ink. So you see me all the time. I will color with this and I will, or I'll stamp with it and I'll emboss, uh, you know, heat emboss. I'll stamp with it and I'll color with Copic markers. I will do my letter press, right, with my press plates with this as well. Uh, but there's so much you can do. It's really a go-to ink because it has a combination of properties. And so now you're going to see me stamp with it and then I'm going to use watercolor paints with it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get this inked up. And we'll see how many times. I, I may ink it once or twice. We'll see. Depends on how fresh my ink pad is. I really should date my ink pads like when Ooh, I open them so that I know <laughs> how long. It's just because I, 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 craft, I craft every week. So got my stamp pendable just to get some good even pressure across it. Allow that ink time to soak in. And I'm going to ink it up one more time. It's a large stamp. So I'm going to make sure I get it really good in the center there too. So I'm going to use a little more pressure with two hands and just move this across. Notice with the stamp pendable, my hands are still flat and open. I have arthritis in my hands. For me to be grabbing and pressing, it just is not an easy task for me to do sometimes. Gorgeous. Looks Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and grab my Extreme Clean and get any excess ink off of this stamp. I'd like to do this before I put it away. I am going to blot. There you go. Get that excess off of there. See it? And now I'm going to get my stamp cleaned up. Now, because it is a mix of properties, all right, it does have permanent qualities to it. So it's going to leave you know, some discoloration, if you will, or a little staining, whatever you want to call it, behind on your stamp. And I don't have a problem with that. I actually, to be honest with you, Alan, I'm going to toss this to you so you can rinse this off in the sink if you wouldn't mind. Ouch. Uh, ouch. <laughs> you threw it out of my head. Yeah. Um, I actually like to have a little bit of color on my stamps my because, you know, they're photopolymer, so they are clean. Not clean. They're clear. And when it's perfectly clear, when you go to look through it and you go to line things up, sometimes it's hard to see. So I don't mind that it leaves ink behind because then um, it makes it easier for me to see the design from the back side when I go to line things up, right? So that's just my preference. Not everybody feels that way, but it is my preference. So I'm going to go ahead and put my stamp away now because I am done with it. Ah. There we go. Look at that. Not going anywhere. Cling and store. If you guys don't have any, if you guys are looking for a good good solution for storage, our cling and store is absolutely fantastic. Okay. So let me put some of these things away. I'll leave that out. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. All right, so now I'm going to get set up with my watercolor. I've got my little cloth here for blotting. And I'm going to start doing some painting. Let me move some things over a little bit here. OK. Now, Each of these has, let me put these like these. If you don't have these, this is a really big set, okay? Um, but if you do have them, you know, everything's in, you know, like Japanese or something. 
Yeah, it is Japanese. But there's a number by each of these, number 32, 35, 34, 36. You know, if you look on here, it tells you what the numbers are and what the colors are that you're gonna be working with. And in regards to the pink, I decided to work with number 34 and number 36. It's a, like a medium pink and a dark pink, or a wine, they call it actually. So 34 and 36 are actually, uh, they're right here, 34 and then 36. And so to start, let me get these smaller brushes. I'm gonna start with my, the larger brush here, which is the, it's zero, size zero. And to start, I'm just going to add a tiny little bit of water in a region here, okay? Now I am going to get a little bit of water going in number 34. And I'm going to bring that right here on my glass mat. All right, a little more water just to loosen that up a little bit more. Now I have some water in here already and I'm literally just going to dab some water in. If I feel like I have too much, I will go ahead and blot off on my towel. But I'm just gonna dab a little in. If I want it a little bit darker, I go right back into the source, which is my paint and I'm gonna bring this in and I'm just moving that color around, clean off my brush and I'm gonna pull down just a tiny bit to leave some white up at the top of that. And that's all there is. I mean, I'm literally just trying to get white at the base, or not base, color at the base of, um, of that petal. So these petals are coming like this petal has a bottom to it and then it comes up, all right? So at that bottom is where I want to have my color. So I'm coming to the next one. I want to work, I'm working spaces apart. So I'm leaving white in between while they're drying. And I'm just going to add a little bit of color in here. I like to do this in two layers. So I put kind of like a base color down, like so. That's my lightest color. And then I will come in and I'll deepen it. So I'm going to skip these two petals here and go out to the next one. This is probably the easiest stuff that you will do because there's, I mean, you're literally just putting a little bit of paint down. It's easy. Just kind of dab that brush a little bit. If I want a little extra color, a little bit darker, I go right into the source, right into the paint. Blot a tiny little bit. And I'm just going to kind of move that around. And it's okay to leave a little bit of white space. Right into the source, just a little bit darker. And I'm just kind of dabbing it in, okay? So your water is really, really important. You wanna have, oops, if you get a big drop of water, come in and blot. Fell right off of my brush. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to come in here with another petal, go around to the other areas where I don't want color. I'm going to pull in with no paint from the top and pull down. Okay, and that helps me keep it kind of light up at the top. This one here is drying a little bit with a kind of a harder edge, so I'm just going to come in with a little bit of water to soften that little edge there. All right, so you just kind of want to pay attention a little bit to what you've got going on. Just kind of watch them as they dry. Blot in a little bit of color. I'm actually going to let that one go. I'm going to leave it because I like that it's darker at the bottom and it's white up toward the top, or light, I should say. Really soft. Pick up some color, dab that in. Let it move. If it doesn't move where you want it, give it a little nudge. All right. You, you really want to let the water do most of the work. Clear up here, so no paint. And I'm going to come in here and dab. So again, here's no paint. 
a little bit of color, maybe a little more. Just dab it. If you feel like you've gotten too much or it's not moving where you want, give it a little help. If you end up with it in places where you don't want it, go in with a, um, a clear brush with no color on it and it'll pick up some of that for you. Okay? So now I'm going to come back. I'm going to come over into here. I just don't want to touch where I've already laid color down until it's dry. Look at how simple. It's just like the easiest thing you'll ever do. Put a little bit of water down. Let the color move through the water. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> oh, Angie's voice is very calming. Oh, wow. That's Alan, what? did you hear that? <laughs> Thank you. It wasn't very calming this morning. My husband doesn't <laughs> think my voice is very calming. What do you mean it wasn't calming this morning? Uh, what does that mean? Yeah, we probably shouldn't talk about that. Oh. Is that when you found out we're getting a dog? Um, no. No? We're getting a dog, everyone. Are we? <laughs> a stuffed animal we have? No, we're getting a dog. We have stuffy. Yeah. And read it. <laughs> there we go. A little bit of color. Look how pretty. Now I'm going to come in here a little bit darker right in the center here and just watch. Look how pretty that is. How yeah. gorgeous that starts you to get when it gets a little bit darker. No, well, we might. We'll see. Can I say you? <laughs> so do y'all remember our little saga with Alan and his shoulder? You guys think he's so smart. <laughs> you guys think he's so smart. You're all so fooled. He informed me this morning. I thought this was hilarious. I still think it's hilarious. He informed me this morning that he wanted to talk to me. He felt that, you know, because I, he, he, we need to talk about these things, that he wants to get another, bike, uh, another motorcycle. You said we need to talk about these things before. No, I didn't say before you do it, we need to talk about these things. I said we need to have a discussion about these things because my husband promised me when we got married that there would be no motorcycles. He thought that he was just supposed to mention it to me before he got it. Or so he says. We all know that's not what he really thought. It's a safer, safer I'm trying to be safer. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll talk about this later, honey. <laughs> you forget things that I remember. All right. Let's see. So I'm going to go into this one now. I like leaving that little bit of white up at the top. Now we will probably come back in and add a little bit of color to that. I'm not going to leave it white. It's just that I don't want to get it so dark right now with other color because then we end up a lot darker than I want it to be. So put a little bit of pink in here. I'm going to wipe off that brush and I'm going to smooth this little area here. Just kind of blend out that pink a little bit. Now I'm going to come into some of these other little areas here where I just have really light, um, where it's kind of white, and I'm just going to add the slightest little bit of pink, just so it's not so white. Very, very light with whatever is left on my brush. This one needs a little attention. I'm going to come in here, right there. So we even give you, in this illustration, we give you like these little lines, and those lines that are in there are telling you, hey, 
This is a dark area, okay? This is where you're going to lay some extra deep color. That's your shadow, all right? So pay attention to those areas. So all I'm doing is adding a tiny little bit into those little white spots, okay? So this one is just about done with that first layer. While that pink dries, I'm going to show you these leaves. I'm not going to do this second flower because I've already got one done that we're going to actually craft with. I am going to come back in with a second layer of color on this pink, though, just to show you how I did it. All right, look at that. Nothing ever dries on the, on the glass mat. All right. So now I'm going to come in with these leaves. And the two colors that I want on the leaves are going to be number 53, which is mid-green, and then number 58, which is evergreen. And so, where is it? 53 is right here, this one right here, and then uh, 58 is evergreen. So it's here and here, all right? So first, I'm going to come in to 53, get some water, and let's get this moving around. Glass mat is so phenomenal because you get to mix right there on your mat. Okay, so a little bit of color. I'm just going to lay this down right on that leaf and just put a tiny little hint of this green. I just kind of want it underlying. I'm leaving some little areas in there, kind of white. And that's okay. And then I'm going to come in with this next one and pick up a little bit of that green. So really easy. These are smaller, so I'm not going to worry about starting it with, you know, leaving water down first. But I think I will put a little more water on my brush. Okay. And then right over here is another one. Just really, really simple. Okay. Now those are still a little bit wet. So they do need to dry a tiny little bit. I'm actually going to blow on it. Just because I want to come in and keep working. This is this is the hard part, of, part about watercolor. So like normally I would leave that and then I would move to the this one here to do that little that little bit of pink. But for time, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to give it a quick blot, which lightens it. When you blot like that, it actually picks up some of your ink or not ink, but your paint. But it's all right. All right, here's my darker green. Now, for my darker green, oops, I'm going to change brushes. Sorry. I'm going to go to my smaller brush now for my darker green. I'm going to go right in to my source and be a little more selective with where I put my color. Okay, now I'm going to get a little bit more water on my brush. Clean that off a little bit. And just kind of come in and soften that a bit. Just a little. And then in some of the areas where it's really light still, I'm going to come in with that lighter green. Now I'm going right into my paint for my darker green again, just to get a little bit of drama. If you feel like you're getting too much, 
come back on it and collect some of that paint. Okay. It moves the paint back out of the way. There we go. Just kind of move it around a little bit. And now I'm going to come in with the next one. I'm going to kind of paint or draw a line with my darker paint. Add a little bit of water. and just keeping it really, really simple. I'm going to add some of that lighter green in here again and then come back in just kind of at the base over those shadowed areas with that darker color and then smooth it a bit, just move it with the water And then same goes with this one. Add a little more color back in with that lighter green. Gives us a bit of foundation. Sometimes it gets lighter as it dries. You know, so you want to kind of spruce it up a little bit. There, a little bit of water and kind of blend. All right, so there we are with those. There we go. Now, I would finish this, you know, there's more leaves in here, there's little um, pinky flowers in there, but I do want to show you what I would do, or how I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to my pinks here, but I'm going to go more with the deeper red at this point, okay? So, I'm not going to put the water down first every time, I'm going to come right to my source, and I'm literally going to just, uh, got too much water on. If you see water about to drip off of your brush, make sure you catch that. Okay, so now I'm going to add some color in here. This is the really deep, deep color. I'm kind of giving almost some little paint lines, if you will. Now I'm going to come in with some water. And I'm going to kind of move that around and it's going to create a little more drama for me. I'm going to come in with some water up at the top and kind of meet it and just blend that out a bit. This one right here where it's leaving where I want it to be, I'm just going to push that back in with the water. Okay, remember it's your water that really controls everything. Do you see how this one already just kind of made its way out there? Really pretty. If you feel like you're getting a harsh line with anything, smooth out that line with water. Okay. That's what's so wonderful about our watercolor paper. It's incredibly forgiving. And if you're using really good paints as well, like the Kiritake paints, you're going to be able to kind of come back and play and control that water a bit. All right, so I'm just going to pull some of this out a little bit with the water just to kind of soften it, but I don't want to blend it all the way through. It gives it almost like a dramatic kind of a look. So up here, again, with water, I'm going to soften it, get a little more water. If you notice it's not moving like you want, add a tiny little bit more water. And when I get more water on my brush, I'm literally only getting water at the tip of that brush. Now I put a little bit of color there because that petal kind of 
scoots in a little bit right there. Okay, so this is kind of where we're headed. I'm going to move on to the next one. Again, I'm putting it where the petals meet. A little bit of water and I'm just going to kind of move that around a little bit. Come back in with the water and just kind of meet it. This one, I feel like I want a little more color in here. If it starts to dry or if it seems like that color has moved out of where you want it, you can always add more color in. Okay. Pull this out a bit. I want this to be a little more dramatic, so I'm going to add some more color to it. And don't be afraid to move your image around that you're working on, too. Don't be twisting your hand everywhere. So this has a hard line here. I'm smoothing that out with water. You just kind of want to watch how things are drying and what's happening. How's that looking? <laughs> Every once in a while we see a squirrel in the picture. I'm not sure what it is. What are you talking about? A big hairy squirrel. Oh, is it that? <laughs> <laughs> My head keeps getting in the way. Is that what you're yeah, trying to tell me? <laughs> so now I'm going to pull this color through. I'm going to push up a little bit, I'm going to clean my brush, and then I'm going to come in from the top with a clean brush and pull down. That's going to help to smooth out that line a little bit. There you go. When I watercolor, I have a very hard time with just letting the water take it and flow. Okay, so you see me manipulating it because I like it to go a certain way. <laughs> um, I've seen some people watercolor and they are just so fantastic about letting the water just kind of move. I'm sorry, the paint um, move in the water. Um, and um, I'm too, uh, see, all right, hold on, before I forget, see how I went out of the lines there? Fix, look at that, gone, water. But anyway, I have a hard time, I got a big drop here, let's get that real quick. Um, I have a hard time letting the water do all of the work, so I have to nudge. So that's what I do, I nudge it around until I get a look that is at least pleasing to my eye. I'm going to kind of, this one looks like a harsh kind of a line, so kind of flip that up a little bit. All right. I'm going to move over to this area over here where I know it's dry. Because I think I have a lot of water in those other areas there. Right here where it kind of tucks up here at the top a tiny little bit. Okay. So I'm going to use the water to move it, and I'm going to use the water to take it away as well. So clean brush, come in from the top and push it back down, because I want to have that lighter look up at the top of the petal. So I use the water to push back down and kind of blend it. Now this little area here, we're going to see how this is going to work. Just move that water around until you get a nice little blend. There we go. 
and then this one here. Now you want to be careful too that you work in small areas because you don't want it to dry ever, you know, completely and then you not have a chance to move or to fix an edge. So when it dries, you can get like, you know, sometimes you get like little water lines on it and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But I do like to minimize that look a little bit. All right. So I'm going to do a little bit more here and then we're going to get we're going to move over to the one that I've already done. So get this dark right in here where it's nice and dark. Right here where they kind of connect. I do like to get these little areas where they kind of have like a little bendy up at the top there. So I rotate around as I push because I like to push up. You'll find the more you do this, you'll, you'll learn where you have the best control. Okay. So I like to push the paint up and then I will pull the water back down. You will develop your own, you know, sense of what works best for you and how you control it the best. All right. So pretty. Look how gorgeous that's looking. Yay. You want to see the one that I've already done? Yes. <laughs> Actually. Well, it doesn't require, you know what, Barbara? Barbara says watercolor requires a lot of patience. Honestly, this is, I mean, I, for me, it's just relaxing. What, Alan? Nothing. I'm just looking at it. Oh. For me, it's just relaxing. I, I put music on that I like, and for me, it's just very calming. I think the one you're doing now is much nicer. Do you? Yes, yeah, because it's, it doesn't have the real dark pink in it. That's what I'm adding in right now. <laughs> Goofball. No, oh, it's like walking up somebody's house and saying, oh, yeah, I'd paint over that color, too, only to find out that's the color they're painting. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to my ex-brother a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. There we go. So I'm going to show you the one that I'm working on. I'm sorry, the one that I've already done. So this is where, because I, I don't want to spend the whole time here. I do want to have a finished card in the end. So I'm going to move this over. Rinse this off. Oh, thank you, Agnes. Alan, will you come and get the water real quick so that we can not have a mistake? Are you done? Yeah, that, that's all the painting I'm going to do for now. Oh, okay. Here's where I landed. Okay, this is what I did before we went live. Okay, so you can see I've added a couple of layers. I filled in where some of that white was. All right. Stephanie is asking, is that flower a rose or something else? To be honest with you, it's not really a real flower. That's why we called it. <laughs> It's a sketch. It's just kind of a sketchy flower, a big billowing. What I wanted was just big billowing, kind of vintage, antique, you know, looking big flowers. So it's not necessarily a real flower. So, um, yeah, it's, I, I just love it, though. Isn't that gorgeous? So pretty, 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 pretty. <laughs> so we went from here to here. And this just has, like I said, I, I just kept working with that darker layer. And this is where we landed. All right. So let's go ahead. Oh, and I die cut it. All right. So I die cut it already with that large coordinating die. You can see how beautifully it fits on there. It cuts brilliantly. Just beautiful. Um, and then now we're going to play because I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the card. So I'm going to set the flower aside for now. I have... Let's see. Now I'm going to be working with Nina Classic Crest Solar White cardstock. So this was um, this was a full sheet of paper, and I just went ahead and I cut it at four and a quarter lengthwise. And now I'm going to score it at five and a half. So I have a top folding A2 card base. What 
whenever you're folding, now you have your score line here, so whenever you're folding, you fold away from that, that score line so that you have a nice, beautiful, flat edge there. All right. Now next up, I wanna do layers with this. So this is where we are. Um, next up, we're gonna be working with this beautiful square. We're gonna do some die cutting, Mr. Hunt. Oh, yay. And we're gonna cut this square. I'm thinking we're gonna cut it two or three times, but I'm not really sure. So I'm gonna use this other piece here. And I'm thinking we're gonna layer it up, but right now we're gonna cut it once to see if what I kinda wanna do is going to work. So I've got my Spellbinders um, uh, plates here. I, I'm working with the Platinum 6, and I like to put the, the cutting blade down. Tip, don't ever run your fingers along these things because they are blades, all right? You will cut yourself eventually. If not, you know, right away, it will happen. So um, I guess I'll slide this over here, Mr. Hunt. <laughs> yes, I'm ready. <laughs> Goofball. That's what attracted me. My assistant. The fact that, that you could get things done. <laughs> <laughs> My assistant isn't assisting, right? No. All right, so here's what you get. Now, this is really cool. I want to show you this. See how this die cuts? It has like these little pieces here. Those are inlay pieces, so you can toss those if you want, but if you want to cut this out of more than one color and then use those inlay pieces, really cool. If you want to use this die to cut through, you know, let's say you have a full image. Maybe it's our, let's see, our tulip uh, background uh, press plate and you've got that whole thing pressed and, and colored beautifully and you want to cut, you can cut with this, this whole thing and then you can stack that up and you can inlay those pieces and get a lot of beautiful texture with it. So, you know, keep that in mind. Um, look at that beautiful square. We're gonna have to hold on to that. I think I might use that for my, for my sentiment. Okay, but this is, this is the little floating frame. And so what I'm thinking, I was kind of thinking, I could just lay it over the top here and just have that frame as texture I could also, and I'm going to do a lot of white on white here. I could also lay it back like this, which I thought was kind of pretty, or maybe like this, like that, and have that kind of go over it and then put a beautiful sentiment. I'm not sure what's going to happen. So we're going to kind of play. I am going to cut this more than once. Let me just trim these little bits off of here. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Um, all right, let's do one more. There we go. Oh, thank you, Sandy. She says, I love watching you craft. It's so relaxing for me. <laughs> it's relaxing for me, too. And yes, Kathy, the circle one is really cool, too. I've got to tell you, too, the um, this floating circles, I think we only have, what do we have, two of those left in the store? Those are already on reorder. We sold out very quickly. Those are already on reorder, but it's gonna take a couple of months before we get them. So if you want one, like I said, I think there's only two left. Um, let's see. Look how pretty that is. I think I'm only gonna layer this up two times. I think that's what we're gonna do. Interesting die, thank you, Kathleen. You know, I love the idea of having two beautiful, um, you know, nested squares, but I thought, first of all, I wanted it all in one piece um, because it's, it's kind of a pain to try and perfectly center one square into the other <laughs> when they're spaced apart. And I thought it would just be a really pretty kind of, um, you know, frame where we have the little bits there that are connecting them. Look, you can also use it as a diamond. Isn't that cool? So pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and where's my glue? Here's my glue. Uh, yes, you can use it for a shaker card too. Absolutely. 
Uh, let's see. So I'm going to go ahead and put some adhesive on here and just stack these. Now, our glue goes on white, but it dries clear. It's hard when you're putting white glue on white because you're hoping that it's coming out. <laughs> and it's hard to see when we have all these lights in here. It's, you would think that, you know, the more light you have, the better you could see, but it actually, when there's too much light, it can make it a little hard to see. Okay. Now let's see. Oop, oopsie daisy. Let's see if I can line this up on here. Beautiful, beautiful. I like layering two or three because then it gives me a little more dimension. We're going to see if I'm going to do a third. I don't know. We might. Just pops it up a little bit more because I don't want to pop it up on foam. So, um, We'll see if we're going to do a third. I do have another die cut that I want to do because I want to have a pretty edge and I thought that it would be really nice to do one of these beautiful diagonal stitch um, on my A2 cardstock. Let me grab one. There we go. Okay, now Mr. Hunt, I might need you for this one because my arm, and I'm sitting, you know, all that good stuff. Right. In a moment. I'm going to tape this down because it literally is the same size as my paper. I should probably actually be cutting this from a larger, slightly larger size piece of paper. But we're going to go with for it. Let me make sure I have it on there right. And I have it on an angle because that's going to go through the die cutting machine better, Mr. Hunt. Misto. Misto Hunt. Hey, I can't keep up with chatting and. <laughs> You're not supposed to be chatting. Well, I, I guess you are. That is part of your job. I take it back. We got to keep you busy over there, give you something to do. <laughs> I'm a dog for you. Oh, I already know what dog it is. No. Yep. No. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually looking at Golden Retriever. Nice, big, beautiful Golden Retriever. Look how pretty, 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 pretty. Okay, let's put this one here. Kind of thinking, let's see how that's going to work. I think that worked. That sets in there really nicely. Yep, I think that sets in nicely. So we're going to leave that. Where's my sentiments? All right, let's get these out. Um, let's see where we are. I think I might pop this up one more. I think I'm going to cut one more layer with this. I don't have as much dimension as I really want. So I'm going to cut this one more time. This is how it works. You just kind of play until you get what you want. So I'm going to layer it up a third time, run that through my die cutting machine. there. All right, get this out of the way. Get all my little bits and pieces out of here. There we go. Now, if your dies start to curve a little, just kind of bend them back. It's not going to hurt them. Don't bend them in half, for goodness sakes, but just kind of give them a little bit of help. That can happen. Now, our dies are really good and heavy. You know, but sometimes when you're going through that, when they're going through that pressure through the machine, um, you know, it can cause a little bit of curving. So just give it a gentle nudge back in the other direction. Okay, so give this a little more adhesive here. Come on, Ann. 
orange. There you go. Here we go. It is a thin line, which has pluses and minuses. Right now, I have to be a little steady with my hand. But the plus is, it is so delicate and gorgeous. Look at that. It's perfectly symmetrical, no matter how I put it on there. It's gorgeous. Okay. Now that gives me a little more height that I like. Now we've got maybe a little more than a sixteenth of an inch, but not quite an eighth of an inch in height which is really nice. All right, so let's see how this is going to work. I could put it here and just have that beautiful little bit of dimension back there, which is quite pretty. Or I could tuck this under, which I think is really cool because now I see that little bit of a frame and I think it's really beautiful. I think that's really nice. I like that actually. I like it kind of up at the top there too, toward the top a little bit. I think it's really pretty. Okay, I have to think about what I'm going to do with a sentiment too, because I'm thinking that my sentiment might come right in here. I'm a little concerned about how much I might cover with the sentiment, so I'm wondering. <laughs> I think I might tuck this down just a wee bit. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp my sentiment before I lay everything out on there and get everything done. I'm going to stamp. This is just one of my scraps. I'm going to ink up my sentiment. I am going to use the smaller sentiment on here which says, sending you all my love. All right. Give that a quick little clean, since it is brand new, first time I'm using it. Second one, perfect. Clean that up. Oops, there we go. We're also starting to run low on the extreme clean. I will mention that for you. Just in case you were interested. Oh, actually, I need these out because I need this dye. All right. Okay, so here is the tape that I use, because I do like to reuse it if I can. I line these up beautifully. Perfect. Cutting blade down, right? Let's see how we did. The tape that I use is from uh, scrapbook.com. It's their mint tape, which I absolutely love. Okay. 
I am going to put some foam on the back of my sentiment because I want that popped up just a little bit. Just a little square. Okay, so let's see where we've got everything here. We're going to have this kind of here. You know what I think I'm going to do? Hmm. I'm going to cut, I'm going to layer up my beautiful floral. I'm going to cut another die cut with my floral. Because I want to layer that up and give that a little more body to it as well. So it's just going to be plain. Oh, no, I got it. It's okay. Um, what? It's interesting. Are you going to have it coming out like a trellis? Like you just looked at it? Yeah, I'm going to have it kind of, I'm going to have the flower kind of woven through, yeah. almost like it's growing through. Yeah, that was awesome. I like that. Book. Thank you. So now I'm going to layer these two up. It's going to give me a little more thickness to my beautiful billowing blossom. Get some adhesive in there and I do want to get it up in those areas. You know, I want those edges to, um, to stay down. Come on, there we go. Kind of go along those edges so that it catches. I don't want pieces popping up. Okay. There we go. All right, so this is a good time I wish I would have done this before. What kind of glue do I use? This is our LDRS craft glue. This goes on white and dries clear. It is absolutely wonderful glue. We've used it for years. I use it. This is the only craft glue I use. I love it. Make sure these are nice and dry. <laughs> Deborah says, love, love, love those flowers. No, I want to do some watercoloring. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lisa. She says, we have the best glue. I use it all the time. Thank you. So now this has some thickness to it. All right. So it has some, some weight, which is nice. It's what? Approved by Angie. It must be good. <laughs> oh, did somebody say that? No. Oh. I did. Oh, you're sweet. You don't accept anything. I don't. I'm very, very picky and choosy about. Here's the thing. Alan's saying that because when, um, when I started this business, I did it. I started it because there were products I wanted that I couldn't find on the market. All right. And then I also vowed that any product I put out would only be a product um, that I would use. And I'm very particular about quality. Um, very particular about quality. There have been a lot of um, things that I did not approve from manufacturing because they did not meet the standard that I would want to craft with or that I would expect when purchasing product from a company. Um, you know, craft supplies are not, they're not cheap. And I don't want them to be cheap, right? In quality so um, so I'm very very particular about it and I think this is going to go right here I think that looks really pretty I'm very happy with that okay so herein lies the question I'm going to I gotta make sure I do this <laughs> and allow that flower to um, 
to, sh to pop on through. I want enough adhesive everywhere. I also want to have, mm, I want to have adhesive on here too. All right. Oops, I shouldn't have closed that up because I want adhesive on these corners so that they lay down. God, I hope I'm getting this right because I have never done this. <laughs> okay. All right, there's the beginning. Tuck this under so that that glue catches where I need it to catch. Straighten out my little window here. Let's hope it's straight, right? Oh my gosh, let me, all right, phew. make sure I don't have it upside down. <laughs> Wouldn't that be just like me to do it upside down, like the card upside down? By the way, if I had done that, if my card base were upside down, you know what? how I would solve it? I would cut it right up here with my blade, and I would use it as a whole new topper and attach it to another card base. That's what I would do, by the way. All right, I like that, that looks nice. I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue on here just so I have a little bit of freedom to move it. It's gonna go right here. Mm. What? I don't know. What? Not really anywhere else to put it. I could put it here, but I kind of like it. Well, now you got me. You, you, you give me no, the. Hmm. I just really like the leaves. <laughs> I thought it would be pretty if I put it here. Yeah, I, I think it is. It's very nice. That way, I, I still see a leaf yeah. over there. I'm still trying to figure out how you figured out how to interweave it there. And <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I think that's pretty. There we go. And we're done. <laughs> Yay! I like it. Yay! I like it. I like it. I'm very happy with that. Thank you so much, everybody. I think they like it. Hey, Mikey. <laughs> so cute. Oh, I really do. I think it's beautiful. I'm very happy with that. From all angles. It looks like it's growing out through a trellis or it's like peeking out of a window or something. Oh, I'm very happy with that. Yay. <laughs> oh, okay. So are we ready for, let's go ahead and go back to the front facing camera. Okay. All right. Hi. <laughs> Oops. So I am, uh, I'm very happy with that. I think it's really pretty. Yay. Yay. I love it. Ah! I always love trying to find new ways of doing things, and I think it's really cool having that frame and using it as, you know, kind of a window to bring that the, the flowers through. I think it's really neat. I like it. Okay. Thank you, honey. All right, so... I promised a giveaway. Actually, I promised two giveaways. Yes. What, ah. is the, what are the giveaways? So guess what I got in the mail? I, ooh. Since we're, uh... I don't think this has been launched yet. <laughs> Here. I don't know if it's been launched yet. Uh-oh. <laughs> it just dawned on me that might be a problem. Can you show the ad? Maybe not. I 
forgot to check and see if it's been released. All right, well, that's, All right we're going to have to hold off on that. That's what, what <laughs> that would be really bad. If I gave away something that wasn't that even released bad. yet, that would be, oh, I would be in trouble. Yeah, you Ooh. Would, Okay. You know how much I did prom it? wait, I did promise two giveaways though. So I'm going to do two. What are you going to give away? I'm going to give away actually now I'm going to give away two of the A2 diagonal stitched. Oh yeah. The big the right, big we'll dies. That. We're going to do two of them. Okay. All right. <laughs> Lori says me me, I won't tell. <laughs> okay, so we have two winners already. Mr. Hunt already chose two names. This is for the large uh, diagonal stitch frame. Um, oh, oh, he's even so he's got one from Facebook and one from YouTube. So Stephanie Theodos, 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 T H E O D Theodos. Yeah. Stephanie Theodos, you have you are winner number one, numero uno for those dies. And Mary Kay Wary from uh, all the comments on YouTube, Mary Kay, you have one as well. So both of you, please, we need you to send your complete name and address to customer service at ldrscreative.com. Linnea is going to get that out there for you so that you guys can send that information to us. And we will get your A2 diagonal stitched um, cover plate dies out to you in hopefully in tomorrow's mail. If we get your information right away tonight, we'll get them out in tomorrow's mail. So yes. what? If anyone's ordered in the last 24 hours, we will get those oh, out yes. tomorrow. Yes, um, Alan wanted me to say, if anybody's ordered within the last 24 hours, they will go out tomorrow. We always try and get orders out. Like, you know, if you, if you look at our policies, it, it says 48 hours, but we always try and get them out same day, if possible, next day um, at, at, you know, the latest. Um, but we've kind of had an onslaught, so <laughs> we're just a little bit behind. So if you've ordered within the last 24 hours, your order will be shipping tomorrow. And if you get me your information from, uh, from tonight's winners, we'll get those out tomorrow as well. So everybody, thank you so much. This has been so much fun. I hope you enjoyed my card, and I really hope that you guys will try watercoloring as well because it really is one of the easiest things. I know people look at it and they think this is so hard, but it's really not. You just need to, well, just kind of do what I did. And just kind of just pay attention to where your darker colors, your shadows are going to be. And especially with this Billowing Blossoms, we've given you shadow lines in there already. So you can't go wrong. We've made it super, super easy. And you're going to get gorgeous results just like this. So everybody, thank you so much for joining tonight. We will be back uh, next week. Oh, real quick. I found out yesterday then I'm going to be on HSN on Tuesday. <laughs> that's the way it is. Yep, that's the way we roll. Uh, I think it's 11 p.m. on Tuesday night. We have a brand new bundle. And um, I'm going to tell you, it's, well, I'm not going to tell you what. Well, I will, because this is the only sneak peek I get to do. It's stack and collage. It's cool. So it's one of our most fun favorites, and it's the first time and the only time we're doing stack and collage. Um, that we, the only time we've done it, uh, first time we're bringing it to HSN. So that'll be at 11 p.m. on Tuesday night on HSN on their television. What, honey? I know we had a lot of fun bundling the, uh, kidding it. <laughs> yes, we did have fun kidding it. Anyway, all right. So have a wonderful evening. Have a fantastic weekend. Uh, I will hopefully see you guys from, uh, from HSN. We're actually going to be doing it here in studio because they just let me know yesterday. Uh, but I will be back next week. And uh, we've already got a, a, a bundle, a special bundle uh, for next week's live as well if you're interested in that. So hopefully you will join us next Thursday at 7 p.m. We would really appreciate it if you enjoyed this video. If you would give us a like, give us a thumbs up. And... Um, and please subscribe if you haven't already so that you know when we're going to be going live. All right, everybody, have a great night. Have a fantastic weekend. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been an absolute pleasure. Bye for now.